Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here with lesson number 22 on the Raspberry Pi. We've been spending quite a bit of time kind of getting up to speed on Linux and we've finally gotten to the point that we're starting to think about users. And so the Pi comes with one user, the user is Pi, the password is Raspberry. But then after that you've uh, got to start thinking about adding users and when you add users you've got to think about what permissions they have and we've sort of address a little bit in the way that we added the users that if we add the users and just make them part of the group users they can get a folder and mess around in it but they can't do much damage anywhere else or to the operating system we can add then we showed another lesson where we could add a user that had admin privileges or basically the same privileges as the default Pi user has where you have access to everything and can do anything well, a concept that sort of comes out of this is this concept of permissions, <clears throat> and that is who can do what to what, okay? Who can do what, where? How about that? Who can do what, where? And so to kind of start getting our arms around this permission thing, you know that we've been using the command ls. Let's get this active. So you can see I'm logged on as pi. Where am I? pwd. I'm in the slash home slash pi. That is my home directory, my little personal squiggly directory. Okay, let's see what's in there. LS. Well, if I see a little bit more, I can say L. There's there's not enough, enough in there. Let's add a couple of text files. So let's. What's the quickest way to add a file that's empty? Touch right. So let's do touch, and let's say cats.txt. Okay, and let's do touch dogs.txt. Okay, now we do an ls. We see two folders, which are in blue, and we see two uh, uh, text files, which are empty, but are white with txt. So now let's do an ls. Let's look at a new option on ls. Let's do minus l, and that'll give us some more information. Boom, look at this. Okay, we see our files out here, but we've got all this additional information. Okay, this is what's new. This string of stuff out here, while it looks confusing, is describing the permissions. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to take you through these permissions. Okay, the first character, in this case, the first character is a dash. If the first character is a dash, this means that this file is a file. So look at this, cats.txt is a file, and so the first character is a dash, just meaning it's a file. Look here, the first character is a D. That means for this one, because it's a D, that means that this is a directory or a folder. Maybe you think of it as a folder, but it's a directory or a folder. And notice that... <clears throat> This uh, shell is nice and sort of makes the folders blue and the files white, so it's a little bit more graphical. But you can see that really what tells you that it's a folder is this D. Then we look at this, the dash, that means it's a what? It's a file. We come over here, that's dogs.txt, which is a file. And then we look here, <coughs> and this is D. And what that is is a directory, which is Python games. And so we've got the first thing that we understand. When we do ls minus l, we get a complete listing showing the permissions. All right, What the first character is, is dash means file, d means directory. Now, there are should be nine additional characters, three groups of three. And so the first group of three, the second group of three, and the third group of three. Let's look at the first group of three, RW dash. All right. What this means is read, write, execute. Read, write, and execute. These are the read, write, and execute. For the first three, that is talking about the user, the user who owns the file. Okay. What can the user who owns the file do? Okay, we have a file. That file has a owner, a user that owns it. Who is the user that owns it? That's right here. <coughs> the user that owns it is Pi. 
What can pi do is shown in these three. Not this one, this one, this one, and this one. These three. R means he can read it. W means he can write to it. And this dash means he cannot execute it. So what privileges does he have? Read, write, and not execute. He can read it, he can write it, and he can execute it. Well, let's see if that's true. I can say a cat, which is just going to look at it, of cats.txt. And, well, it's empty, but I didn't get an error for that. Okay, let's see if I can write it. Well, how would I do that? Nano and cats.txt. And I can say, I do not like cats. Okay, now I can go Control O, which write it. Do you want to save it to this name? Yes, enter. Okay, and then I Control X to exit out of there. Now I can say cat, cats.txt, and look at that. Okay, so what can I say about that file? Let's go back, ls minus l. What I can do is cats.txt, these three. I can read it, I can write it, but I am not allowed to execute it. So let's just see if we tried to execute it. Cats.txt, okay, command not found. So it's not, it's, see, it's not recognizing it. It is not recognizing it as an executable file, okay, because I have read, I have write, and I don't have execute. Let's look at the next three. So these three show you what the owner the user owner, the account that owns it can do. Okay, The next three shows what <coughs> the group that owns this can do. So you sort of can have a user own a file, but you can also have a group of users that can own a file. So the user that owns it, he can read, write, but not execute. The group that owns it can read it and not write it and not execute it. Okay, so you can see that it doesn't, it, it, you know, it doesn't allow you to write it if you're just part of the group that owns it. And for this file, only the user that owns it. Okay, so you know, you kind of got users, which is how you log in, and then you can lump a bunch of users together into a group, and then you can let that group do things collectively, or you can let a user do things collectively, I mean, by, by himself. So the user can read it, can write it, but cannot execute it. The group that owns it can read it, but cannot write it, and cannot execute it. The third group of three is everyone else. It's the world. Anyone in the world not associated with this file, they're not the person that owns it, the user account that owns it. They're not part of the group that owns it. They are just some random person off the street that sat down at the pie. You know, they could read it, but they could not write it or execute it. You can see here there's not much advantage to be part of a group owner because you can't do anything that a person off the street could not do. Okay, so that shows what those things are. First one is, is it a directory, is it a file? Then these three, read, write, execute for the user owner, read, write, execute, the next three, read, write, execute for the uh, <clears throat> group owners, and then the third one are read, write, execute for the world or anyone else. Okay, so let's see this on the next one. The next one is a directory, D. What can the owner do? The owner can, I mean, the owner can read, write, or execute. Now, what does it mean to execute a, uh, what does it mean to execute a folder? Well, that means you can go down into it. So what's the difference between read and execute? Well, I could ls and look into it by giving a path name, but that's different than cd'ing and going down into it. So if the, the user owns this, they can read it, they can write it, and they can execute it. How about a group owner? Well, a group owner could read it and could execute, but could not write it. Well, th what that means is they could look down into it, 
with an ls or they could crawl down into it with an x but in either place they're not going to be able to add things to it they're not going to be able to delete things from it they're not going to be able to change anything in it because they're not given right permission <coughs> and then this is again the world anybody in the world could read it, anybody in the world could execute it, meaning they could go into it, but once they're in there, they can't do anything because they don't have right privileges. So that's the way these things work. You've got to think in terms of an owner. Who owns it? Pi. Okay, so if we come here, who owns it? Pi. What group? Pi. So this is the user, this is the group. This is the user, this is a group. This is a little odd because in this case we've got a user and then we've also got a group name called that. Okay, so this is kind of boring because all I've got is pi stuff. Okay, let's look and say I did sudo instead of just doing a touch and make a new file of cars.txt. What if I did that under the super user as a sudo command? sudo touch cars. Okay, well, let's do an ls minus l. Okay. Uh-oh, I have a new file called cars.txt. Okay, let's see. What is it? It's a file. What can the what can the owner do? Who's the owner? The owner's root. What can the owner do? Read, write, but not execute. What can someone else do that is part of the group that might own it? They could read it. What could everybody else in the world do? Everybody else in the world could read it. All right. <clears throat> so let's see what this would be then. Let's see if I'm, uh, I'm still pi. Now I just go back and I say cat or let me let me let me edit it. Okay, let me see if I can edit it. So I'm going to say nano and then I am going to say uh, cars.txt. Okay, there it is. Now I say this is my Ford Mustang. Okay, now what am I going to do to write it? I'm going to go Control O. Okay, file name to write to cars.txt. Yes. Oops, error, writing cars.txt, permission denied. Okay, so let's see if we can Control X out of this. Don't save it because it won't let me save it. So you can see that for root, for cars.txt, it belongs to root. And root can read it, write it, but not execute it. And I'm not part of this as pi, and I'm not part of this as pi. So the only thing that I can do is read it. Okay, I cannot write it. Even though I was pi when I made it, I made it a pseudo, which gave it to root, which then won't let me uh, do anything with it. So uh, you can see that it let me open it in nano but that's just like reading it it didn't let me actually write it so if I wanted to write it what would I need to do well I would need to connect to it as sudo nano cars.txt and then I could say this is my Ford Mustang and then I can control O do I want to write it to that enter to say yes and then control X I'm out of there and now Look at that. It took it. So let's do it ls minus l. Okay. And you can see that uh, it's still the same there. But I can do a cat now, not pseudo cat, but just a cat. And I can do a cat of cars.txt. <coughs> this is my Ford Mustang. Why did it let me look at it? I'm not root. Well, because everybody else in the world has permission to read it, but not write it, okay? So this is kind of the quick overview. You've got read, you've got write, and you've got execute. And, and you can sort of see there's all types of different permissions and all types of different levels. But, but really, it's kind of like, like if you make a file, you can do what you want to with it because you'll own it. If you make it with sudo, then you'll only be able to edit it with sudo. Another user could edit it as sudo because he would pop back up to being that root user. Okay, I hope this wasn't terribly confusing. 
If, uh, if you have questions on this, post your questions. But this is sort of just, it's not the full-blown story. I mean, we're going to go in in later lessons and see how to modify these permissions and so forth. But what I want you to see right now is there's kind of like, we could think of it almost on two different levels. One is what you can do, read, write, or execute, and who can do it. And the sort of who is, is, is really for us, it's almost like two different things. Either you're sort of a normal user who can only operate in your folder and not in other folders, or you can bump yourself up to sudo where you can do anything. So it's sort of like right now, we're thinking in terms of kind of two levels. Users that can only do things in their own folders and with files that they've created, and then sudo that can do anything anywhere. Now there's millions of different machiations of that, but that's where we are now. Okay, Paul McCorder, toptechboy.com. I hope this helped you understand Linux permissions a little bit better. We will talk to you later.